Hello guys, this is Dustin, and welcome to the first episode of this mini-series covering Love to these shaders, um, and kind of shaders in general. So this episode, we're going to be talking about what shaders are. Um, it's going to be a little bit technical, but uh, shaders are a more advanced topic, so it's really good to understand what's actually happening underneath the hood. Um, so first off, let's talk about what a shader actually is. So essentially, shader is co a shader is code that runs on the graphics card. Now, why we need a graphics card and code that runs on the graphics card is because um, our CPUs are really good at running stuff sequentially, so one instruction after the other. But when it comes to processing millions of pixels and millions of vertices, um, it just it, it's not built for that. So that's where a graphics card comes in. A graphics card has thousands of cores that can all run in parallel and basically process every single pixel on the scene at the exact same time. But we have to tell the graphics card what color each pixel should be and where to place the vertices on the screen. And that's where shaders come in. So love to d is built on uh, the Open G using the OpenGL API. Um, that just means, uh, the Op OpenGL is basically an API that allows you to communicate with the graphics card and uh, control it and tell it what to do and all that. And OpenGL uses the GLSL shading language. So in turn, love 2 d also uses GLSL, though a slightly modified version. Um, so GLSL is a different programming language. It's not Lua, um, and it, it looks a lot like C. So if you're familiar with the C programming language, then you'll fit right in. It looks just like C. Um, with just a couple different tweaks and stuff like that. It's statically typed, meaning you have to know the type of the variable, and the type of the variable cannot change. Uh, whereas, and, and we'll go into examples a little bit later. Um, and yeah, like I said, Love2D uses a slightly modified version of GLSL. Um, it it kind of changes a few things. It also adds some new types, like number and stuff, to make it more like Love2D and more like Lua. So let's talk about static static typing real quick. So in Lua, in Lua, you can say local x is equal to hello. So x is the uh, is equal to hello, and it's the type string. But immediately afterwards, you can set x equal to a number, just like this, and this changes its type to an int. So Lua is not statically typed because the types can change. Whereas in GLSL, um, right here we're setting x to be an integer so we're telling what uh, we're telling the computer what this variable is going to what type it is and we're setting equal to 100 so we cannot later say x is equal to the string this is not valid so that's one thing you need to keep in mind when you're programming GLSL code so let's talk about the different rendering uh, different stages of rendering so the two that are most important to us right now are is the vertex shader and the fragment shader so these uh, so OpenGL gives us access to uh, basically write code for these different stages and basically the vertex shader says where each vertice on the screen lies so um, so it's, it's a little bit confusing because isn't Love2D a 2D you know framework well it is but it's also graphically accelerated meaning it's actually uh, using vertices and actually placing um, vert vertices on the screen and all that so you do have to transform those using the vertex shader Whereas the fragment shader, you can think of a fragment as kind of a pixel, but with some extra information like the depth buffer and some other stuff like that. So it's basically, the, right here we say where the vertices lie on the screen. So basically where on the screen is the sprite located. And then down here we get to say what color each pixel on the sprite actually is. So you can, yeah, here's another example. So you, can, you see these points right here that make up this quad. You can imagine a sprite is uh, drawn on this quad. The vertex shader says where each point lies in space, whereas the fragment shader says what color each pixel on this uh, on this mesh actually is. All right, so there's my presentation. Let's actually get into uh, programming some shaders. Oops, gotta main out Lua. All right, what I have here is a very simple Love 2D project. What it does is it loads an image, and then it just draws the image at zero zero. Um, and then I, uh, I use the R key to restart it. So if we run this, you can see it just draws the map of Link to the Past, and we can click R and it'll restart it. Very simple. So let's actually write a shader. Um, and we can actually write a shader in line right here using a multi-line string that Lua provides. So we can say lo local shader code is equal to, and of course the multi-line string starts by two square bra brackets and it ends with two square brackets, so everything in here is just a string. And this is where we're actually going to write our shader code. You can load this from a file, but for now I'm just going to do it like this. So, 
uh, Luftd requires you to provide a a function that um, that gets called, and in this function, whatever you return as a vector for is the color of that pixel. This function is titled effect, and it has a couple parameters. So the first parameter is a vector for color. So when you say set, uh, Luftd set color, that color gets passed in right here for this right here. All right. The second coordinates is the image. Or the second, sorry, parameter is the image that we're drawing. The third parameter is the UV coordinates. So when you say, um, when you use a Love2D quad, uh, it basically updates these UVs right here. Um, the next is the screen coordinates. So this tells us um, where on uh, where on the screen the pixel we're currently drawing is. So. There's our effect, and basically what we have to do is return a color. So we're going to return a color, and uh, it's just going to be a vector 4. A vector 4 has four uh, values, an X, Y, Z, and a W value, or you can think of it as an R, G, B, and then an alpha value. So we're going to just return the color red. And it's going to have full alpha value. So if we run this, nothing's going to change, of course, because we just created the string. So now we actually have to create the shader. Um, I'm going to create a value, or actually I'm just going to make it a global. So I'm going to say shader is equal to love.graphics.new shader. Now the first parameter is the fragment shader, and then the second parameter is the vertex shader. In this, for in the first few episodes of this uh, tutorial series, we're just going to be covering the fragment shader. And then we'll move on to the vertex shader, because the fragment shader for now is the most useful for you guys. So if you only provide one value or one parameter, that will be considered the the, uh, the fragment shader. All right. So again, if we run this, nothing's going to happen because all we did was load it. So now we actually have to tell Love2D to use our shader. So we do that with the set shader function. Then we pass in the shader variable. Um, and then once we uh, tell Love2D to use a shader, we have to tell Love2D to stop using the shader. So we're going to go down here and we're going to just call set shader with no value. So now if we run this, we'll see that we just get a pure red screen. And that's what we expect, because we said return the color red for every pixel on the sprite. So, but what, we want to just return the regular color. We, we just want to return the actual color of the pixel of, that's on the image. So to do that, we have to sample the image at the UV coordinates. So we're going to just do that by creating a vector 4. We're going to name this pixel. We're going to set, set that equal to tech, the function texel. What it returns is the pixel at the UV coordinates. All right? And then we're just going to return that. So if we do this, nothing changes. We just see a comp uh, the, completely, the complete regular image that we expect. Um, and then, of course, we want to multiply this by color. And then now we'll, yeah, now we'll be truly correct. So down here we can say, love to dset color. We're going to set it to red. And remember, in the newest love to d update, colors are scaled from 0 to 1 and not 0 to 255. So now if we run this, everything will be red. But if we don't multiply this color, we'll see that it uh, we'll see that it's, it doesn't get multiplied by the color, so it's not going to be red. So you can kind of see how this works down here. So this opens us up to a lot of really interesting things that we can do. For instance, let's say we want to make a black and white. Uh, we want to make the image black and white. We want to make our entire game black and white. So to do that, we're just going to take the average of the four pixel values. So pixel dot r plus pixel dot g plus pixel dot a or b, sorry. Um, and to take the average, of course, you add them all together and then divide it by three. Don't forget the semicolon. This uh, programming language requires you to have a semicolon. And right here, we're t saying that this is a floating point number, meaning the number has a decimal, whereas an integer uh, doesn't have a decimal. All right. Next, we're going to return a vector four. AV, AV, and we're going to use the average as the three RGB values. And then we're going to return a, a solid, uh, we're going to have it be a solid alpha. So if we just run this, we have a black and white image. Now this is technically not pr a, a very good way to do black and white because it has very low contrast, as you can see. So you want to adjust the contrast later and stuff like that, but that's outside the scope of this video. Um, so one thing I want to talk about before we end it uh, before I move on to the next episode, um, is the screen coordinates variable. So the screen coordinates variable is not normalized. 
Meaning it's not, it, so the value is not zero to one, it's actually the zero to the size of the coordinates. So I can explain this better if I just, let's just return screen coordinates. Um, we're gonna return one for the blue value. We're gonna do x, y for the uh, red and green value. So we're gonna run, run this and you'll see that it's completely white. So what we can do is we can actually do, uh, normalize that, so we're going to say vector2 is equal to, uh, we're going to do sc is equal to screen coordinates, and we're going to normalize this by the uh, uh, size of the screen. So how do we get the size of the screen right here? Because uh, right here we don't have any, we don't have any values that uh, tell us what the size of the screen is. And this is where we get to send in variables into our shader because we have to send in variables from the CPU over to the uh, graphics card so that we can use it in the shader. So to do that, that's where the extern keyword comes from. So we're going to return, we're going to pass in an external vector2, and this is going to be titled screen. All right, so to actually send this value, we're going to say love, actually we're going to do it after we set the shader, love.graphics. Uh, or no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. We're going to say shader send. We're going to send in the variable screen, so make sure this is titled exactly the same thing as this right here. And since it's a vector2, we're going to pass in a table with two values, and this is going to be the screen size. So we're going to say love.graphics.getWidth. And then we're going to pass in love.graphics.getHeight. Now if we do this, we're actually going to get an error. Uh, shader uniform screen does not exist. Um, so. This, so uh, what our graphics card does is there's an optimization so that if we do not use the variable, the extern variable, it's going to optimize it away and just get rid of it. So that's why we get this error. So we need to make sure that we actually use the screen coordinates, the, the screen variable. So we're going to say uh, sc is going to be equal to a vector2, and we're going to say screen cord, chords divided by screen dot x, and then screen chords dot y divided by screen dot y. Alright, so this, would, this is going to normalize the screen coordinates to 0 to 1, and that's useful for using it as a color. And then we're just going to say sc right here. So if we run this, we'll see that we get this nice like gradient color. As, because as red starts going to, uh, going to 1 right here, it's going to, uh, well it's going to turn more red. And then as it goes to 1, 1, it's going to be more white. Um, and we can use our pixel sample right here, so we're just going to do this, we're going to multiply the color we get by the pixel color, and now we can see that we kind of applied and mixed the two colors together. So in the next episode, I'm going to be doing, or the next few episodes, I'm going to be covering simple lighting that we can do using uh, just the pixel shader. And then later maybe we'll do some cool like um, god ray stuff using the vertex shader and the pixel shader combined. But uh, yeah, that will be the first. This will be the first episode of the uh, tutorial series. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And if you want to see something about, if if there's something you don't understand, or if you want to see a video on shaders like covering a certain topic, let me know, and I'll get to that. So yeah, see you in the next video, guys. Bye.